Oh, you love to play. Oh, you love to play. Don't your comments won't relate. Sign it on my page for you. Oh, my God, he changed. Young life, I can't see back on my. I just need some brains so I could keep myself in order. He got problems, she got problems, only I got 411 problems. Say hi, what's up, y'all? It's time for another story time. This story time is going to be very, very quick. Very quick. Because most of the stuff that... is repetition, but I'm going to, like, actually show you, like, the videos. But, yeah, it's just, it's really, really, really 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 quick <laughs> so anybody knows like when you're moving or when you're looking for an apartment looking for a house like you you you're supposed to check it out like it's kind of hard to do when you're like moving from state to state like you're out of state and you're moving to a whole completely different state that's kind of hard to do but if you are like in the area the thing to do is like you you go check the spot out during the day and you go check the spot out during the night. So, because at nighttime, the neighborhood is completely different because everybody's home. Like, when you're walking around during the day, of course it's quiet because most of the people are at work. So, it's quiet. It looks like this nice, it's model -esque. It's, um, what's the word that they using now? Aesthetic. Like, everything is. Everything makes sense. Everything looks good. It's like, oh, yeah, this perfect, this perfect, this perfect. And then at the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, it's like kids everywhere. And it's like, not saying that that's a bad thing, but like if you are not ready to have kids or don't really want to do the kids, like you want like a quiet neighborhood when there's a lot of kids, your neighborhood is not going to be quiet. You're going to hear kids running, playing, skipping, hopping, jumping, music, parties, et cetera, et cetera. Or you got the crazy neighbor who's blasting music after work and it's like, I don't want to hear this music after 9 o'clock. But here we are. So anyway, at this time we are staying with Gamer. And this specific house in Gamer's um, neighborhood, this specific house in Gamer's neighborhood seem to never keep people like it was like a rotating door seems like every time you turn around a new family was moving in there like the amount of times that ty and i had lived with gamer i think it was like three yeah three families including the one that i'm talking about there was three different families in there the first family it was um a Muslim family, not saying that it makes a difference, but I'm just describing a Muslim family, and they had issues going on. And then the second was a uh, a couple like newlyweds. They were Caucasian. They were pretty cool. But this one, it's a mom and a son. They're Caucasian. So we have been staying. This is like I think our third time. It might be our third time staying with Gamer. It might be our third time. Maybe our second. I don't know. But anyway, so me and Ty shared like their bonus room. So Ty had the floor and I had the full time. So this particular neighbor, like everything seemed cool when they moved in. It was like, okay, new neighbors. And, like, she had spoke to me because we were outside playing basketball. Because we would do that every once in a while. Like, we would go outside and we would shoot, you know, we would shoot um, basketball. So, she, me and Ty was outside shooting basketball. And so, she came and she spoke. She introduced herself. And it was like, hey, how you doing? Because she was checking her mail. She actually had just got in from work. So, she was checking her mail. Excuse me. She was checking her mail. 
so she spoke, introduced herself, and she was like, yeah, me and my son just moved into the neighborhood. Um, she was like, is it a good neighborhood? Like, is people friendly? And I was like, yeah, kind of. I mean, I was like, people kind of, like, who's, like, right there, like, in the vicinity? Like, you know that person. But, I mean, it's more cordial than constant interaction. I was like, um, um, gamer in like the neighbor across the street like they were more familiar with people because they had been in the neighborhood well actually gamer the lady across the street and these neighbors over here and that kind of in the cattle corner they were more familiar because they were all in the neighborhood and had been in the neighborhood for a while they were all in the neighborhood and had been in the neighborhood for a while so they knew each other so they were more familiar with each other but i was like but new people come in like the longer you stay the more cordial that they get i said and in because they live in a cul-de-sac i said so in this cul-de-sac like they have like get together sometimes they do like parties and stuff like so if you are what you call it participating you know that that's the way you, like you can know your neighbors and i was like i'm just here temporarily so like i don't really count <laughs> and i was like but i attend some of the parties sometimes even when we wasn't staying with gamer like they would have like fourth of july certain holidays and we would go over there and spend time so that's how i know like the logistics and how things go because again even when we didn't live there we would go over there and spend time memorial day fourth uh, of july Certain things like that where they would have like cookouts um, and then they would rotate well. Certain neighbors <laughs> would rotate the house. But most of the time it was at Gamer's house because his wife like get together. She like parties like certain things like that. So um, that like that would make sense. Like it was only one neighbor that I remember going to like their house um, and it was a gay couple. And they were cool. Like, um, you could tell the masculine from the feminine, but they were they were really cool. Like it was really like a nice vibe, so to speak. But they end up moving out of the neighborhood. Um, to move closer to the male identified job. Anyway. So I mean I can tell her all that. But anyway. <laughs> So, I was basically the gist of it is like if you participate or like if you talking, like you know, like you get to know your neighbors, but other than that, it's complete. It's it's quiet, which it was. It was literally quiet. It was nice, chill type vibe. Literally, it was quiet. So she was like, oh, "Okay, thank you. You know, thank you for letting me know." And I was like, "Yeah." So welcome to the neighborhood. So she goes in her house, and me and Ty continue to play basketball. Right. So lo and behold, I would say. I give it a month. I'm gonna give her a month. So a month had a month passes and the ambulance comes through. Now, mind you, because as I stated, it's quiet. So you're going to hear the actually it wasn't the ambulance, it was the fire truck. Because usually now most of the times the fire trucks get there before because fire trucks now have paramedics. So um the fire you you heard the fire truck so the fire truck shows up so of course <laughs> uh where where our room was like i said we were in the bonus room which was bigger which was like their son's playroom so i'm laying on the futon so i can see the lights because there's a window right there so the lights are automatically coming through the window so i can see the lights and i'm like whoa what's going on because again this neighborhood is very very quiet very quiet literally you sometimes you can hear a pin drop outside it's literally that quiet so i'm looking at the lights and i'm like dang what's going on because there's never any action there's never any action around here so it's like what's going on what what so i'm peeking out the window and it's the fire truck they're going to the next door neighbor's house the lady with her and her son and so i was like oh man because in my mind I hadn't seen the son when she said her son i'm thinking young son like me because when i be like me and my son i'm not thinking like an older dude even though there's nothing wrong with that because the way the economy is and has been going for a while get in where you fit in get in where you fit in because the rent is 
high, baby. The rent is high. Rent is too damn high. So if you got to stay with your mama, you got to stay with your daddy, you got to stay with your mama and your daddy, your auntie, your sister, your brother, your cousin, and all y'all help kick in with the rent, and that's how y'all can survive, by all means do that. Because it's high. It's crazy. Ridiculous. At the times when we need a stimulus, stimulate the economy now. Because it's crazy. Anyway, so don't let nobody judge you if you still at your mom's house. You ain't got your own place. You got your, in order to have your own place, you need to at least be making $50,000 at this point. To just keep, to just, to, to just cover rent. To be honest. To be honest. Because things that used to be like $1,500 for a four-bedroom is now twenty-five to $3,500. Just for rent. Anyway. So, I don't judge. Like, I don't... Whatever works for you. Because at this point, I'm living in the guest bedroom... I mean, in the bonus room of my cousin's house. Literally. Because I literally had gotten laid off the carousel, of Bob, the carousel of Bad Bosses. That story time. Check out that series. Um, I got laid off and then couldn't find something. Found something and car got repoed. So, here we are. Yeah. Anyway. So, I'm trying to get on my feet. Trying to get stuff together. So, literally, I was like, oh, no, I'm hoping, like, something is not wrong with the baby or little boy because all she said was her and her son. So, I'm looking because, as I stated, I don't have to move. Like, I'm laying on the futon looking out the window, <laughs> looking out the window to see, like, who y'all going to pull out the house because I'm hoping it's not the baby. I ain't asked if you had a husband or not because, literally, that ain't my business. But... I'm trying to see who coming out the house. Like, who who y'all pulling out the house? So, finally, here come the gurney. And there's a dude on there. And you strapped down on the gurney. You sitting up, but you strapped down on the gurney sitting up. Beard full. And I was like, who the hell is that? So, me not thinking like that's her son. I was like, well, maybe that's her man. But she kind of look older. Here again, not judging because, hey, some of the older ladies like the little young, the little young tenderonies and the young things. And some of, some, some of the older men, a, a lot of the older men like the younger girls. It's for control. Anyway, but yeah, who am I to judge? So I was like, well, maybe that's her man. That can't be her son. Minding my business. So again, they, like, they take him in. The truck leaves, paramedics leave, they go on out, right? Okay, so the next day, it's still quiet. And when I say it's quiet, like this neighborhood is quiet, it's quiet. From the beginning <laughs> to the end. The very rare do you hear anything. You knew, like, the neighbors over here in the cattle corner, they had a son, and you knew when he was coming because you would hear his music. He didn't live in the neighborhood, but most of the time he was coming over there because they was watching the game. So that's when you would hear him because his music was playing, he was hyped up, it was Sunday, it's football, let's go, let's get it type situation. But it didn't bother us, of course, because, again, these houses in the cul-de-sac, these three, not including these house, these three knew each other. They were familiar, so... You knew that was their son pulling in. He was coming in for football. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so. I would say. I give it another month. <laughs> another month goes by. And. Here comes the fire truck paramedics again. That's odd. So. Y'all pull in. You go to the same house, waiting, waiting, looking. They are always talking about us and how we should be. They should be scared of us. But guess who's back again? I don't even know why they put the lights on for him.
They should be used to it. Should know him on a first name basis. It's ridiculous. Routine. Hmm. Who would have known the gurneys are now electronic? And that's some shit. I'm old as fuck. And there he is again. On the stretcher. Same dude. Craziness. And it's the same person coming out, same way, on the gurney. <laughs> so mind you, at this point, was it this time? No. So I'm looking, I was like, that can't be her man. That can't be her man. Because you, not saying like young people don't get sick, but something is a little suspicious. <laughs> something is weird because this is the second time within a month. That you, you know, have gone out the same way. Something not adding up. The math not mathing. But I'm going to mind my business and my business minding me. But I'm going to watch out this window to see what's going on. Because clearly I have a straight view. So, now you're kind of the talk of the neighborhood. Because, again, the neighborhood is very quiet. But here, the fire truck, the paramedics have been to your house twice within a two-month span. And it's weird, of course, to us. So, the neighbors over here in the catacorner house, I'm outside. Again, me and Ty are outside because we try to not be in the house, so to speak. Like, we try to go out and get some air. We're outside. We're trying to get some air. We're trying to, like... You know, make the best of the situation that we're in. And the neighbors in the cat corner are like, you come over and you like, hey. And I'm like, hey. Like, you know my face because I've been around again. Like I said, even when we don't live with Gamer, like we would come for holidays, cookouts, such and such. So you knew my face. You were familiar. You didn't know my name. But I knew your face and you knew my face. And so the neighbor, like, they're coming out in their car. And so they, you know, they pulled the, they down their window. They're like, hey. And I'm like, hey. And they're like, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? And they were like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on next door? And I was like, um, I don't know. I was like, maybe he has a sickness, you know, like serious illness. I was like, I don't know. I said, all I know is, you know, in the past couple of months, they, you know, take him out in a gurney. And I was like, so maybe he has like, you know, an illness. And so they kind of, you know, did the little side eye and I. <laughs> did the little side eye and did my shoulder shrug and I was like I don't know and I was like I yeah I was like maybe he has like an illness so of course if you live in a subdivision some subdivisions has HOA and so of course they started saying where well, rumor mill is around the HOA is like he a little he a little touched he a little cuckoo he a little crazy and I was like Oh, and I was like, oh, he has mental issues. And they was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. I said, but well, then again, if the paramedics are coming and they, you know, they're strapping you down, you, like, she really need help. So I was like, she, if that's the case, she really need help. And they was like, what you mean? And I was like, I don't think people realize or understand. I was like, most of the time, like, everything is focused on the patient. Uh, the person who has the mental issues, nobody is focusing on the parent or the people who have to care for that patient, who has to care for that person. Nobody is focusing on that. Nobody focuses on how it tears down the person, like the parent's mental. Nobody focuses on how 
how it drains the parent, how you are constant, like you have to alter your life. You have to think about you're in danger because you don't know where or when or where the mental will turn. So you're watching your back. You're not comfortable sleeping. And I was like, it's a lot. And they was looking at me like, because here I am, they don't know. I'm dealing with a depressed kid. So you don't know if you're walking in to them unaliving themselves. You don't know what you're walking into them trying to unalive you. You have no idea what is going to come from it. Every day is a new day. It's something. Like you, your whole life is altered. Real talk. Real talk. So I was like, if this is like the gist of it, she needs help. Like, it's a lot going on. And I was like, and all I see is him and her. So, that means she's dealing with it by herself. So, they was like, oh, like, I ain't think about that. And I was like, most of the time, like, we don't. We just think about the part, like, the, the patient, the one that's dealing with the mental issues. We never think about how it affects or how it affects the mom, the dad, or just mom or just dad or the family as a whole, period. So, they was like, oh, man, yeah, you right. Well, you know, we're going to pray for her. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're going to shoot up some prayers for her. So, they left. They left. So, well, lo and behold, it was crazy, like, how karma kind of spin the block for them. <laughs> I really don't think they meant harm. I think they was just trying to find certain things out. But, lo and behold, this particular night, like, they had a little action at their house. So, I'm sitting again. But the in the bonus room, like, during the summertime, especially the summer months, it was hot. It was exhausting. It was sweltering. So, I would have the window up. So, I had the window up, and I hear, oh, you trying to play me? You trying to play me? Give me my daughter. Give me my Give me my daughter right now. Give me my I said right now. So I'm peeping because I'm like, because again, the neighborhood is quiet, quiet. So I'm peeping. So the lady is like, why are you coming over here with all this noise? Like, you know, my neighbors don't play that. You know, they're going to call the police over here in this neighborhood. Get away from here. Like, let's come, come in the house. Let's talk about it. Come in the house. Let's talk about it. Now, mind you that. If I'm not mistaken, the house in the candle corner, it was like a family. And it was like a family of siblings that lived together. They were older, but one of the siblings had their grandchild in the house. So, but again, they they lived together. Like I said, whatever works for your, your household and how you manage your money is whatever works. Period. So, I was assuming like... Since she was talking about come give me my daughter, that you're the mom of the grandchild that's always over there. Always over there. So now all of a sudden you want your daughter. Now, who's to say maybe she was a little <laughs> or maybe she maybe she was a little but who's to say you know didn't have a little special additives going on this particular night because this has never ever happened like their house is quiet neighbors cross the street house is quiet gamer house is quiet and usually this house over here is empty <laughs> but it's quiet no paramedics no fire trucks are pulling up at this moment so the lady one of the ladies of the house was like get away from here because my neighbor's gonna call the police they are going to call the police so the lady was like, get from over here because my neighbors will call the police. This is not the neighborhood to do this. Come inside and let's talk about it. Nah, nah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I want to give me my daughter right now. Give me my daughter. So the little girl is like crying. You can hear her crying. And so she was, the little girl started saying, I want my mama. I want to go to my mama. I don't know what it is about kids and how y'all wired, but I don't know why y'all be so anxious to go with the people who won't really be spending no time with you. Like I don't, I don't know what, what, 
what is in here with kids because I did it too. Did I tell that story? I think I did. I don't know. It might be on the story time of I tried to unlock my father. I think I did, but I did it too. I did it to my mama. And like looking back, it's like, what the entire, what is it that you're wired that? Because girl, like I said, she was over there all the time. Nobody saw your mama. You was always with your grandmother. I'm assuming that's who one of the ladies was. You was always over there. Nobody saw your mama. So now all of a sudden around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, your mama wants you. She wants you to come and you want to go with your mama. And so my thing is, it's like, let them go. Go ahead. Please. Get you a break, lady. Go ahead. And so the girl, little girl is crying. I want my mama. I want my mama. And so she's telling like the little girl like to get back in the house. So she kind of, you know, pull her and move her back in the house. And so she's telling like the little girl, mama, like, come in the house. Like, come, come in the house. Let's talk about it. Oh, that's what you want to do? That's what you want to do? You don't want to give me my daughter? Watch this. Watch this. So they shared a vehicle, if I'm not mistaken. Like one of them had a vehicle. Or maybe two of them had a vehicle and one didn't drive. Some Something like that, so to speak. But it, it worked for them because if the one who didn't drive needed to go somewhere, like they all were, I think they all were retired, to be honest. Anyway, she started and bust one window out on the driver's side. Girl, what are you doing? The people who watch your kid all the time, why are you busting out windows? What are you doing? And then you doing it in front of your daughter. So the little girl starts screaming. Literally. The lady was like, why would you come over here and tell my stuff? I don't come over there acting a fool at your house. I don't come over there tearing up your stuff. And she's still keeping calm because at this point, you a good one. Because, baby, I don't care how old I am. You're not going to come over here and tell my stuff. And I'm about to call the police on you. You can take your little rabbity ass to jail. Because at this point, what, what the, what? Give me my daughter. Give me my daughter. You went to the passenger side. You knocked that window out. Girl. We still not. We still not. So she. The lady was like. My neighbor's going to call the police. Ma'am at this point in time. Your neighbor's not calling. Well I ain't calling. I'm looking. Because I'm nosy. At this point in time. When she knocked out the first window my love. You should have been calling the police. You walk around. Went to the passenger side. Kapow! You knocked that one out too. Girl, what? At this point, give little Raggedy Ann to her Raggedy Mama and let them go. Because at this point, she done knocked out three of your windows, ma'am. Let them go. Because I, I want to fight. I want to square up. I don't even know them. Because at this point, it's like, what the, what the what are you doing? And, this, and these people watch your daughter all the time, stupid. What are you doing? You ain't stopped there. You went to the back window. You beating on that one a couple of times because this window is kind of big. And you finally break that one. Your lady finally let the lady out. So somebody called the sun because here come the sun. Like usually the sun is like you creeping in slow. You can see the uh, the team that you repping because you were huge in your flags. This particular night, no, baby, you was, you sped in there, sped in there, pull up, slap your car <laughs> in park, jump out, doors open. I don't know who was on the passenger side, but they jumped out too. Girl, what you doing? What you, what you doing? Man, they, they don't even have that stuff over here like that. Man, they about to call the police on you, man. Get your, in the car. I don't care. Give me my daughter. Give me my daughter so the dude was like let her out the let 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 her have her. let her have it and so the lady like no because he was like nah let her have it look at your car let her have it let her, so she could get from over here that's what i said after you broke my window the first time baby you could get the eye from over here you and your daughter goodbye goodbye he was like let her have it let him let him go so the little girl cried, oh, 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 oh. Girl, let her go. Let her go. It, matter of fact, wish she, she gonna need you again. Don't even let her come back. She gonna need you again. Don't let her come back. 
she let the little girl out the house. Little girl run, got in the car with her mama, got in the front seat. When your little need to be in the back seat in a dang on booster, you got in the front seat, mama pull off. I don't come so you hear the lady saying, I don't go to her house messing up her stuff. Look how she done messed up my stuff. Look how she done messed up my stuff. And I felt sorry for her because it's like, you can go all out for your kids. And sometimes them still don't respect you. They'll go above and beyond. They don't care about nothing. They will still disrespect you as long as they get what they want. That's all they want. And they, they will go above and beyond to get it. Don't care. Don't even realize. Don't even have a clue or inkling how you sacrifice. So, dude goes in the house. Nobody ever called the police. The police never showed up. Because none of us was calling the police. I wasn't. I was looking. Because, baby, if you wanted the police to be there, somebody in your house should have called. But, I guess from the standpoint, looking is like, why would you call the police on the little girl mama? Because you probably already know she ain't all there either. Anyway. The next day, the next day comes, and, like, you can see, like, the aftermath, like, the glass and stuff, it was still sitting there. But around, I would say, like, 12 noon, 1 o'clock, uh, safe flight repair, safe flight replace. She had already called her insurance company. That was covered. That's when you pay your bills. I guess you ain't got to worry about it. But she had already called safe flight. They was over there. They was fixing all her windows. So, Game of Wife was home this specific um, this specific day, and she came, like, she had got off early, and she came, she was like, what happened to their windows? I was like, what happened to their windows? You know what happened to their windows? And I was like, oh, girl, yeah, let me, let me break down the tea, let me steal the tea. She was like, so I told her, like, all the events and all the stuff that had happened the night before. She was like, girl, what? And I was like, yeah, so she was like, dang, that's sad, because that little girl is over there all the time. All the time. All the time. So, literally, at 5 o'clock, 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock, guess who was over there? The little girl. Literally, a couple of hours. So, again, you had to have some additives going on because ain't no way. Ain't no way. You would done drop that girl out. And they was the good one because, baby, when you were talking about I'm dropping her off or I'm bringing her back, no, the, you not. You wanted your daughter so bad, you done messed up my windows. Keep her. Keep her. Keep them. That's why. That's why. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Baby. <laughs> anyway, but Gamer's wife was like, girl, what? Stay out the window. Ma'am, how can I stay out the window when the window is right here and it, out the, it's just feeding me? <laughs> it's just feeding me. And I'm, I'm here for it. Yes, I am. I'm here for it. So, lo and behold, like, they still pass by, like, it'll wave or whatever. You know, you could tell you was embarrassed. But. You ain't really say nothing. I still wave, like, act like I ain't hear nothing, act like I ain't see nothing. I'm still going to wave at you, whatever. Y'all, yeah, lo and behold, I would say maybe a week later, I'm going to give them that. Here come the emblem <laughs> in the fire truck. Now, at this point, you, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. So, we already know at this point who coming out. We just waiting. This particular time, it took a little longer than it did previous. But we looking. Looking. Like, we're looking at this point. Because it's taking y'all a little longer than what it has previous. Well, dang. What's going on? What, what? Hmm. Okay. But, lo and behold, here you come. Because they went. The paramedics, the firemen, paramedics, firemen. They went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth inside the house. But finally, lo and behold, here you come out on the gurney strapped up. Strapped in the gurney. Outside of your window, peeping. This don't make no damn sense. Goddamn neighborhood. We in a white neighborhood. Chilly. White people. White people. What are you laughing at? What'd she say? Oh, I feel sorry for her. I 
I don't know. They haven't brought it out yet. Weren't we just talking? They said they were talking about him. Huh? Oh, yeah? Cop just standing. See back at the truck. Well, and there we are. Bringing little crazy boy. Again. Out of the house on a stretcher. Crazy as hell. So at this point, this particular time, Gamer's wife is home. Because most of the time when they was coming, it was like the weekend and Gamer, Gamer's wife and Gamer, most of the time, like they're really sociable. So most of the time they was going or they was out of town. So you didn't see it. So most, or she was asleep. So this particular time you saw it. And she was like, what's going on? Because her neighborhood is quiet. So I'm saying, I was like, girl, this is like the third or fourth time. I can't even keep counting. Like, you know, they come to pick him up. She's like, oh, no. Oh, no. He got to go. Oh, no. He got to go. Because when people are looking for houses and stuff and, like, your property value and all that stuff, like, they checking, like, how often the paramedics are called, how often, like, that activity is on, like, it's somewhere. Your HOA, like, all that stuff, like, people check, supposedly. Like, that's supposed to be somewhere listed. So, so she was like, oh, no, he got to go. They got to go. They got to go. And I was like, girl, what you mean? They got to go. Like, no, no people got a life. Like, like, I feel sorry for the mama, which I did because I was like, again, if she's by herself, I never see anybody else over there. You just move in. You the only one working. You trying to build a life. Well, have a peaceful life because at this point like she looked like middle age so you're trying to have some kind of peace but also trying to support your son trying to love your son trying to deal with this all by yourself because i'm pretty sure at this point your family is exhausted because i haven't seen anybody else pull up so your family is exhausted with this stuff and i'm pretty sure you haven't been dealing with this just now this has been ongoing so I was like, she was like, feel so, they gotta go. And I was like, dang, dang, like how you just like poor lady. That's literally my thought. Literally, because I can relate. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I can relate. Not to this extent, but I can relate. So she was like, hmm, hmm. Watch, watch. She was like, no, they we don't play that right here. Our neighborhood is quiet. We don't play that right here. So, the next day, lo and behold, when the lady pulled up from work, the head HOA lady was the lady across the street. So, you walk in, you gave her like a good five seconds to get out of her car because usually when she get out of her car, she check her mail. I tell y'all, you ain't get that lady five minutes. You ain't get that lady five minutes. She was getting out of her car. Walking towards her her mailbox, you was meeting her there. And you started talking to her. By the end of the conversation, the lady was crying. I don't know if you had offended her or maybe she was venting and she was overstressed or whatever. But, like, you you was talking because the paramedics and the fire people done been here a little too much for y'all. So, Gamer's wife comes home and I'm telling her, like, the lowdown. Like, why the lady across the street, like... I didn't get that lady five minutes from her getting home from work. Met her at her dang on mailbox. She was like, I'm telling you, she got to go. She got to go. Huh? <laughs> I was like, yeah, 
pull like maybe y'all help the lady out help the lady out she's gonna help her out she gotta go let me mind my business and my business minding me because baby i'm upstairs <laughs> I, I need a place to live let me go on about my business so i'm chilling minding my business business minded me and i would say a good two three months maybe it might have been less than that. It's during the day. I'm chilling, minding my business, watching TV. And, of course, I told y'all, like, my window be up because during the summer months, it's hot. Sweltering. Feel like I'm in hell. Probably. I don't know, but it's hot. It's hot. So, I'm laying there watching, um, because I had Netflix on my laptop. So, I would watch Netflix on my laptop or we would watch DVDs. But I think at this specific point, I was watching my laptop and I was watching something on Netflix. So I turn, like, maneuver over to adjust. And I look out the window and there is a cop, sniper, with this big old pow pow. Chill. And I turned over and I'm looking like, am I tripping? Am I tripping? I was like, what? is going on what are we doing right now so when you're laying down watching tv and you look outside your window to the neighbor what the fuck is he doing i was like ty come here come here come here ty because i think i'm tripping do you see what i see when i'm looking at this window because when you look out the window and you looking at this dude like with a pow pow and i ain't talking about no little i'm talking about a like you laying there ready ready you're ready for war let's get it and so i was like ty come here come look come come here so ty he was like like ty he was he on the video game i don't know because he may have been unsure but or he might have been watching tv typical ty ty don't like to be bothered but he don't mind bothering you anyway I'm like, come here, like, come look at this. So you finally come, and you got an attitude, and you looking until you look out the window and you see what I'm seeing. You like, yo, that's crazy. So that let me know, like, you know, this is not a mirage. You're not hallucinating. Like, yeah, girl, you see this dude laying down, locked and loaded, and he ready. So I was like, go go get Gamer. Go get Gamer. Tell tell Gamer, come up here. Tell him to come up here now. So Ty runs down. Go get Gamer. Gamer is casually walking. Like, I don't understand when people be like, come here. Like, it's important. Y'all drag y'all feet. You come up finally, casually like, what? What's going on? Look out the window. Look out the window. What the? What the? Oh, oh, now we're in an uproar when I'm telling you, like, hey, come here. It's important. Come here. Now you in an uproar? Oh, okay. So now you in an uproar. So now you're you like, oh, no. Nah, oh, no. Nah. So you're calling 911. <laughs> so you call 911 and you was like, oh, uh, there's a man in my neighborhood with this big ass pow pow. What's going on? So now when was like, hold oh, sir, you know, after they got your address or whatever, then uh they put you on with captain, lieutenant, somebody. They put you on with them. So you talking. And while all this time that you talking, I'm still looking out the window. <laughs> Cause I wanna know what's going on. So you get off the phone and then you come upstairs to say our whole neighborhood is on lockdown. Bro, what? <laughs> Our whole neighborhood is on lockdown. The whole neighborhood, the whole neighborhood. But they didn't tell nobody because they didn't want to do a panic. Like, they didn't want nobody to panic. Like, looking out the window or we're just walking out of our garage, going to get something to eat, and you see this. We're not going to panic. I mean, but I guess 
I don't know. I'm not a cop, so I don't know how those how those procedures and how that stuff work. But anyway, yeah, hmm. we're not gonna panic. We were panicking. Well, I panicked, and if, after everybody else saw it, they panicked. But we ain't run outside. So anyway, like, dude is on standoff for a good little minute. Neighborhood lockdown, clank clank. We can't go nowhere. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. Lo and behold, old boy, the one who they kept taking out in the gurney, taking out in the gurney, taking out in the gurney. At this point, you have peaked, toppled over. It's a wrap. You like, either y'all take me out or I'm taking my mama out. Now, remember I said you don't know. Every day when you walk in, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're facing. You don't know what what's going to happen day to day. So that's why I was like, have sympathy for the lady because dealing with a child, a person with mental issues is scary, dangerous, draining. It, it's always something you, yeah, especially in that magnitude, which is what I was saying. I was like, every time they take that man, he's strapped up. I'm scared for her because like if you were somewhat okay or you were taking your meds or your meds was working this wouldn't even be an issue yeah so lo and behold like they finally got him to come out they according to street committee room mill hoa because hoa knew what was going on honey across the street <laughs> yeah according to hoa you had a knife to her neck because you was ready to be taken out so you had a knife to your mother's neck and you made your mother call the police so the police will come and feel to the point like there's no other way like we have to like to save the mom we have to take you out because you had passed the point where you didn't want to be here anymore so that you wanted the police to unalive you but you was using your mama as like a pawn or like the the whole scenario you had come into play with. Yeah. So you came up with that plan. Whole time to unalive yourself. Whole time traumatizing your mama. Which is why I was like, I feel sorry for the lady. I feel sorry for the lady. Somebody you gave birth to taking you through all this stuff. You, I'm pretty sure, had went above and beyond. Had You had come to a means to an end. You don't know how else or what else to do. But yet, you're trying not to give up on that person. Couldn't imagine. So, they took him, of course. To, they, like, they did not unalive him. They took him. And so, after that, like, literally, because it went to that extreme, he got put into a facility. So, with him being put into a facility, literally, maybe a week, a week and a half later, there was a U-Haul truck, and the lady was leaving. So, yeah. That's the story time of The Crazy Neighbor. Now, I'll say this. Mental, mental issues, mental diseases, mental sickness, whatever you want to call it, is real. It's nothing to laugh at. It's nothing to play with. It's nothing to just put anything to the side. Like, it is real. Real. Don't get me wrong. There are people who use that and prey upon people and try to get sympathy and stuff. But there are people who deal with that for real. Like, real life, real stuff, realness. So, if you have someone and you know someone that's dealing with that, I'm not saying that you should not focus on the patient. I'm not saying you should not focus on the person. Just don't forget about the parents. Ask the parents, are they okay? Lend a helping hand. Some way, cook dinner, just a simple text. Have some kind, some kind of, what's the word? Sympathy, empathy some kind of something to where it's like check on the parent because their mental is being tested their body is being wore down it's not easy it's not 
So, I love you the most, because you're definitely the dopest in real life. I'll see you in the next one. Y'all want the black Captain America who don't sign no autographs? Y'all want him? No.